Hey, it's Scott here, and in this video, I hope to begin a conversation about how much to charge for your time lapses. So we're gonna go over what do I do when I get an email asking to license specific shots. I'm gonna show you with my licensing template that you can download for free and use today to send out to potential clients, a breakdown of how I've come to the prices that are on the time lapse template sheet and why, as well as how to talk about budget or prices if you're hired for a project or just a day rate. So of course, I'm not the foremost time lapse expert by any means, but it's something that I see as pretty frequently enough and when I'm searching in groups or different time up forums or YouTube for how much to charge for your time lapses the best thing I find is this thread which I'm gonna link but it's from 2016 so I thought you know we it might be time for an updated conversation so after a while improving your different time lapse skills getting better getting more creative with your shots someone's gonna email you say hey, I saw this clip they're gonna ask you how much is it gonna cost to be able to use it and this is exactly what happened to Davo Leninga hopefully I pronounced that right who posted this in the time lapse network forum where a firm approached him willing to pay and asking his rates. So how do you respond? How do you know your worth? You know, if it was me, I'd be excited. Maybe I was gonna get some money after the fact of stuff that I've already shot. But I also wanna make sure that I'm not taken advantage of. So these are these are tricky things that I've dealt with and I'm going to share not only how much I charge for time lapses, but also, like I said, how I've come to these answers. And my goal here is just to get a conversation going, be a little transparent, and I'm looking forward to hearing alternative ways so that way I can learn and grow as well. So I'm gonna be referencing my own experiences as well as a couple really good threads from Time Ops Network citing Time Ops is Mark Thorpe, Oliver, and Jonas Hohl, which will also be linked in the comments below. So I got my start as a travel blogger and would get asked to license my photos to tourism boards on press and on workshops that I'd go on. So I resorted to paying money for this tool called PhotoQuote Pro, and it helps you figure out how to license images. So for example, one client recently said, hey Scott, we wanna use your images in our annual visitor's guide we have in our tourism offices. We're gonna be looking for five to 10 images to use from your trip for our brochure. What are the prices? Boom, I go to editorial print and it gives me some options so now I need to ask for their circulation and what's nice about this program it gives me industry standard price industry standard pit what's nice about this program is it gives me industry What's nice about this program is it gives me industry standard prices. Nice. Whew, easy peasy. So why am I using that as a comp? Because this program also has an option for video, which a time lapse also is. So we could theoretically just kind of find a similar comp for our time lapses. The problem is it isn't always the greatest comp. It could be something worth starting out, especially if you're starting with from a photography background and you already have it. But I found it's not always the best comp. The problem is just like selling stills, we need to know how and where our video will be displayed. So will it display on social sites like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok? Will it be broadcast on TV, used for internal purposes at events, on a film or TV like House of Cards or Marvelous Miss Maisel? Or do they want every single option? And these are all gonna be things that factor into our price. Speaking of that, do they want exclusive rights? Meaning they own all of the footage and you aren't allowed to sell it again? Or are they okay with you owning it and trying to sell it to other people? Then the next big question is types of usage. Is this just advertising? Is it editorial, educational, or just personal use? Then we need to get to the length of the use. How long are they gonna use it for? Is it one year, two years? five years forever you got to factor that in as well and lastly how many eyeballs are gonna be looking at it all of these things factor into the final price and everyone has their own pricing system and formula but I'm happy to share how I break it down so let's go back to the original question posed by mr. Leninga they're willing to pay they've asked for my rates but I have no idea how to respond with something that's fair so here's the sheet that I send out when I get asked for the time-lapse rates by the way I've made this downloadable and customizable all you gotta do is just adjust the colors in Photoshop to your branding so this is what it looks like for any time lapse, the base is at $400. Since they know what licensing they're gonna to want to use, they can just add up the fees that they might need and they're gonna get an idea of what the cost will be. And you can see what I think these things are worth. Please feel free to adjust it based on how you see fit, your experience. So for internal stuff, not a lot of people are gonna see it. So 50 bucks is what I charge. You can see I just adjusted these to be a bit more expensive based on the nature of exposure of the audience. The bigger the audience that might watch it, the bigger the price that I'm gonna be able to charge. Type duration and circulation are pretty self-explanatory and one of the tougher things I've learned is about exclusive rights for that I just double the whole fee for everything just because I can't ever sell that footage again and learn from my mistake when somebody asks you for exclusive rights you are completely fine to ask them you can even write it on the contract but to ask them 
to amend it so that way you have use for your portfolio. I didn't know that and when I first started, I had signed exclusive rights and learned that I couldn't use it in my portfolio and I even came to them after the fact and said, hey, I didn't understand this and they still said no, womp womp. What sucks about that is you can't even share the things that you're working on. So just for the first year or for a whole year as we we're trying to start a business, it looked like we weren't even working or we couldn't share anything and that really hurt us trying to attract new clients. So that's how I go about it and I believe that's pretty standard. So basically the cheapest time lapse that somebody could license for me is around $500 once you add up the fees. And if you think about it, that's actually pretty affordable because if they're hire someone to recreate that shot, I guarantee you cost over $500 to cover the time of hiring a camera person, any gear required, transportation fees, and then just the time that it's gonna take to create the image. Mark Thorpe addressed this in more detail and I've linked that in the thread in the comments and it's a pretty good way to really assess what you need to be thinking about in order to charge clients and run a profitable business. Now the flip side of that and a thing to consider is the counterpoint that Oliver makes in the same thread. People have shot tons of time lapses either on vacation while they're trying to learn or for previous jobs that they have the they still own the rights to and they can upload it to stock sites and this will diminish your ability to charge more because they're probably super good quality and at one tenth to the price. So the real factor is you're gonna have to have shot something that's either unique or relevant or that isn't readily available in these stock sites. So that's one thing to consider. And so let's address how often do I get people to buy my time lapses after sending them the sheet? Honestly, probably less than 10% of the time and maybe I can improve the approach. But the other way that I used to do it was if someone would email me and say, hey, what are the rates? I'd have to write all of these questions out then they answer, then I respond with a rate, then they ghost me. I'm just getting to the ghosting faster. And that's why I like the sheet. It's professional, it's polite, and really it's just kind of setting up the brandings. Now my attachment with my pricing sheet and my information on my website is in their email thread under time-lapse. So if they ever search their email for time-lapse, my name should pop up. All right, so that brings me to the next point, pricing myself for shoots. So what happens more often is I'll get hired to shoot specific shots or a full project to which I have painfully learned. The absolute best thing you can do is just ask for a budget. The first corporate job I did where I signed exclusive rights and I gave them a day rate, I found out that I left over $80,000 on the table by simply just not asking for budget. So ask for budget. And then if you're gonna be asked to be a part of a crew or a project, most likely they just wanna know your day rate or they're gonna come to you with a budget or a day rate, which is really nice. And so I'll be completely transparent. Before COVID-19, my ideal day rate was $1,500 a day. And that was just a number that I was always trying to get. But there's of course always room for negotiation. I've definitely done projects for way less. It just depends on if it aligns with my goals and what kind of work that I really wanna be known for or what's interesting to me. If it's with a brand that I wanna work with or a person that I wanna work with, then, and it's aligned with my goals and like things that excite me, then it's gonna be something that I'm gonna be way more flexible with. And I've done things with the day rate of $100 all the way to 1500. And there's no doubt that COVID-19 has already affected our industry because we primarily get our clients from tourism industry. Projects where I've worked from free to fee um, or like a huge discount to fee. And the, I do these when I'm really excited about it or I feel like there is an opportunity for me to grow. Maybe I'm, I was new on clients um, and I'll probably be experimenting with that again during this situation to branch out here in New York. So examples of a huge discount to fee would be, I think we did Budapest in Motion for like $2,000 or something like this. And it was great. We got, a, we got a trip out of it. We got to go to Budapest. We got a project that we were really proud of, um, a paying client. And it was one of those things where not only that, but we won a couple of awards from it, as well as by being able to show this work and that we work with the tourism board, it gets us in more doors and it's probably directly put another $40,000 in our pocket because it's a lot easier when you have a client that is a tourism board to get more tourism board work. It's just a per it's just a personal decision that you're gonna have to make on a case by case basis based on how busy you are at the time, your own goals and how much time you have allocated. And I'm a, I work in the US market um, but time up, Sir Jonas Holholt did talk about this in his thread as a European. It seemed like the go-to day rate, 1,000 euros to 15, 1,500 euros. I'll link that part of the thread as well. All right, so we've covered how to go about pricing your time-lapse and hyperlapse sequences, the different rates that I charge, and how I came up with those rates. You also got a download so that way you can send it off to prospective clients to ask you for your licensing fees, um, and hopefully learned a little bit about licensing 
And remember that if somebody does ask you for exclusive rights, you are completely okay to ask to be able to use it on your portfolio. Um, if you get asked about shooting a project, remember to ask for a budget. And then if you're asked to be a part of a crew, have a day rate that you're comfortable with and be willing to negotiate. So like have like a, a hard cap on what's the minimum amount that you would want to do it and factor in your gear, your expertise, all of that kind of stuff. And if I left anything out, please feel free to add it in the comments. You know, this is something that I'd like to be a learning experience as I had to research some of the gaps that I don't know. So if there's anything I can improve on or that you know that I, that other people could learn from, leave it in the comments. Even if it's your own stuff, plug yourself. I believe there's more than enough room in the world for everybody. So plug yourself, your friends, just make sure that it's relevant to pricing. All right, well, that's it for this video. Happy shooting. I'll see you next time.